Roland here from East Marsh Acres and uh, we'll just bring you up to date as to what we're doing. So this morning we uh, finished off putting soil over top of the beds that were already here or re-established uh, after the chickens demolished them. Um, as you can see there are four beds that are, we're working on and then the fifth bed that's got uh, they're just starting to go to scapes, so I think I pulled three off that uh, had already progressed that far. You can see here they are. There's one, two, there's a third one somewhere that I pulled off as well. So what that is is uh, the start of a flowering head on them, and uh, you can pull them off of the garlic plants themselves and uh, then use them as fresh garlic. You can. Uh, roast them as well so they've got that kind of capability and uh, these ones we took a bite and they're nice and sweet um, so there are a couple of of uh, garlic plants that are still left over from last year so there's one and there's quite a nice clump up there um, what we've done in the rest of this bed is uh, uh, red uh, onion seeds. Um, here you can see a little bit of the, the uh, the skin from from the seed or from the small uh, onion that you put in the ground. Oh, and here's one. Um, so this is as far as we got with the 100 uh, red onions. And so what Patricia and Rachel are working on right now are yellow onions. So, okay, these are Spanish here at the front end, and then yellow uh, onions at the back end. Um, so we'll have an entire row of uh, onions and then the red onions as well. Um, this row here, so this is the second one from the right, uh, got a little bit different treatment. Uh, it didn't get topsoil on it. It was uh, some uh, compost material, manure, um, horse manure, and uh, it's with uh, and there's sand in here as well. Uh, as you can see, the the mound is quite high, and what we're trying to do is give the carrots uh, a lot of space so that they can grow down. And uh, so we end up with long, uh, robust carrots rather than the squat uh, thick ones that we had last year. I mean, they taste just as good. It's just uh, a question of we would rather have them the longer. Um, the chickens are under the uh, the chicken shaw. They're out of the sun, even though it's a much more pleasant day today than it was over the last three days. Uh, we're in the mid 20s at this point, and we're into the 30s um, over the uh, beginning of the week, the middle of the week. Anyways, a couple of uh, rhubarb plants uh, that are coming along, and I don't know if you can see them. But we have beans starting to come up. So there's one, there's a couple, there's a few more over here. So this entire row is beans, and we're going to get them to grow up the chicken wire that we've got uh, built up here. There's the beans. And there's another one, two, a few more. I also planted peas at the end here. So there are pea plants starting right here at this. Uh, a little marker with the bag that the seeds came in, um, but I don't see any evidence of the peas yet. This row is potatoes, but again, we're not seeing any evidence of the potatoes coming up yet. Uh, sorry about the wind, I'm probably playing a little bit of havoc with the sound. Um, this row is uh, watermelon. And we may be seeing some watermelon. Here's and here. I don't see too much. Oh, here's some more. So here's two more. Watermelons are up, Trish. 
number of them anyways good to see and then we've got squash and I don't see anything from them and look carefully of course and then sunflowers and some more squash in the back I can't remember what those are some some member of the cucumber or squash and I've shown you these before but here are tomatoes and they're interspersed in the center with asparagus so there's an asparagus plant there there some of them are getting quite large-ish and the strawberries are um, flowering so we may get something off of them yet even though I suspect we're not going to get much um, a little bit of um, chives here on the end so the purple color that you see um, so that's a, a nice oniony taste and I think this is celery at least it looks an awful lot like it and if I go to the hothouse a second or the high tunnel so we've been keeping this moist but we've cut kept it open so the tomatoes are starting to grow up quite considerably you see them uh, gaining in height and so soon we'll come in and stake them so that uh, they can start growing up the wires up into the roof of uh, the high tunnel and of course these are the cucumbers and we'll be doing the same thing with them to the uh, to the top of the high tunnel itself. So we'll be using these cross beams to uh, tie the plants to and give them uh, something to grow up on. Um, I think that bring, brings us up to date for this side of the garden. Um, don't know what else we're going to do in terms of planting over here. Um, I know that we have some some uh, other greens that Trisha wants to get in the ground. So this is Celerac over here. Um, the roots of the, the Celerac actually taste very much like celery, and it's very good in, uh, in soups and ceteras. And uh, this is kale. Uh, so we'll be planting out the kale and Celerac as well. And there's one lone tomato plant as well. Anyways, here are the scapes that I was talking about before. So these come from the, the uh, garlic plant. And there's the bud that's the start of the, uh, the flower. So you take the flowers off so that the energy uh, that the plant is uh, producing pr through photosynthesis from the sun um, is going to go into the bulb, which is where we want uh, the energy to go so that we end up with larger bulbs of garlic that we can harvest and uh, use in all kinds of dishes over the next year. Anyways, uh, that's uh, bringing you up to date for now. Um, chances are we'll actually add to this uh, before the end of today. Um, maybe we'll show you what's going on over there uh, with the blueberry patch and uh, the strawberries and uh, some more um, asparagus, etc. Anyways, that's it for now. Talk to you soon. So it's uh, Ron from East Art Marsh Acres here again, and I'll just bring you up to date um, what we've been up to since earlier in the morning. Um, so it's now mid-afternoon, and uh, done a little bit more uh, in a variety of areas. So um, first off, uh, I think I identified this as a celery uh, patch. And it turns out that it's maggie plants, or mucky plants, uh, as we would say in, in, in the Dutch language. Um, so it's got uh, a flavoring that you can put in uh, um, soups and uh, a variety of other, other uh, pieces. I've also added a few more um, uh, rhubarb plants here, so you can see them a little bit. Uh, they're the green pieces that you're seeing and there's a few more plants over here uh, that I put inside and if we end up with all of those coming uh, 
to uh, fruition. Did we can plant them out in other places. Um, here's a few more. So this is in the other plot. So I've got a few more um, rhubarb plants here. And here's a little bit of dill that I put at the end of the, the row here. Um, so this row now, so the other ones are onions. Uh, so we've got the, the uh, um, uh, all, all of the uh, onion plants uh, uh, on the first two rows. And so this row is now uh, filled up to here anyways. So going along here, this is all kale. And then, I don't know if you can see them, but there's red cabbage in there. They tend not to show up very well. We'll turn the water on uh, and they should revive fairly easily. And then we've got green cabbages here. And some lettuce at the end of the row. What kind of lettuce is this, Trish? What? what kind of lettuce is this? Um, that's that's a <coughs> pak choy. Oh, pak choy. Okay. So. Or napa, Asiatic. Napa cabbage. Napa cabbage. All right, different kind of cabbage. Um, and Trisha is uh, putting carrots into this row, so she's busy sowing the seeds. I'm gonna be out of carrots. I need more carrots. Carrot seeds are really, really small, as you can see, and they fly away easily. And so, to get them to be um, sown evenly, you, you sort of have to be quite liberal with them in the sense of planting quite a number. And we'll have to go back then and uh, thin them out. Uh, but that's the nature of cabbage or uh, carrots. It's better to actually have to uh, to thin them out than to have them so spread that you don't uh, get a hold of them at all, or you don't see much in the way of uh, product when you actually get to the point of uh, dealing with them. So I'm going over to show you what I'm doing in the uh, hothouse. The hothouse is uh, fairly warm, but it's not too bad. Uh, it's The temperature today is probably going to a uh, high of 25. I'm not sure if we're there. It's kind of overcast. It's a little bit, oh, okay, the clouds have all, all gone away. So now it's clear, sunny and clear. It is a nice breeze. Definitely a different uh, kind of climate than we actually had yesterday, or a different uh, uh, set of conditions, that's for sure. Anyways, I am working on the tomatoes. So what I'm doing is, I'm not stringing them up yet, but what I'm doing is getting the suckers out of these plants. So what happens is that Tomato plants have this tendency to grow secondary structures in the, the um, in, in inside the space that's uh, between the main uh, plant and the actual leaves themselves. So here's a leaf, and here's a secondary structure. So we pull that out. And that's uh, a sucker, and we take any of the bottom leaves off as well. And so here's another one. And here's another one, and here's another one, and th that, that will develop into another one, but uh, we'll have to leave it right now because you can't pull it out. All right, let's see another plant here. So there's one. There's a fairly large sucker right there. There's a bottom leaf that I'm going to take away. That's a sucker. There's a sucker in there. So they basically fall out fairly easily if you put sideways pressure on them. They'll fall off. And there's another one forming. We just leave them there. They will decompose and they'll be part of um, the, uh, the compost eventually. 
Anyways, I will continue on. Um, there's some nasturtiums that you can see that have been planted in between. So there's one. There's another one there. Uh, I don't know exactly where Trisha planted them, but we'll find them as we go along. And you see that the peppers are coming up. There's a bean, a volunteer bean somewhere along the line. Got in here. There's another one down there. Uh, more nasturtiums over there. So anyways, I will continue and uh, set this up so that you can take a look at what I'm doing. Here we go. Now, Raul, I planted the sturgeon plant. I know, I planted okay. it. We just don't. Well, no.
Okay, that's one row done. I, uh, I'm going to come out of there and cool off a little bit. Uh, the way, the reason that we actually take those, those secondary growths off uh, is to um, actually provide the uh, plant the maximum amount of growth that it can from the main stalk because uh, suckers have a tendency to decrease the strength of uh, the main stalk. Um, just like anything else in, in uh, the tomato family, they have a tendency to uh, look for ways of rerooting so you end up with it going along the ground and the way that we're actually dealing with our tomatoes stringing them up so that they'll grow up uh, so that they're easier to to work with and uh, easier to actually pick the fruit off of and all those kinds of things so uh, the secondary growth is is uh, a distraction and there it's easier to actually uh, get rid of them now and continue to pull them off uh, whenever we see them anyhow yeah, or it also increases airflow around the, uh, the plant bottoms, which uh, uh, is beneficial for uh, tomato plants as well. Anyways, um, I will go back and finish that off and uh, uh, show you what it looks like when we're finished. And uh, it looks like Patricia is watering beans uh, as she's finishing carrots. And so I, I think I'll do a, um, a wrap up at the end of the, uh, the day when we're finished uh, everything in an hour or so. And uh, uh, talk to you then. This will be the wrap up post for today. Uh, I think we've done all that we can do or all that we're going to do in terms of getting the garden ready. So all 10 bend beds that we've had for the last two years are planted. They are uh, growing and uh, now it's just a question of maintaining. So 10 plus the three now that we have in the high tunnel as well. So I'll show you the results of my work in there, taking the suckers off, improving plant health and that kind of thing. So you can see there's a fair amount of material that has been taken off of the plants lying to the outside of both of these rows. There's a fair amount of um, peas and beans uh, that we don't know how they originated or how they got in here. So chances are there was peas and beans mixed into the topsoil that we put on here or something along those lines because uh, otherwise there's no way that we would know where they were coming from. Right, what Patricia also did was put uh, so we're back to the main gardens. Um, put a row of uh, spinach here alongside the beans. So when the beans grow up, so here you can see one germinating, two germinating, uh, the seed coats, cotyledons is what they're called, uh, initial seeds um, are coming out of the ground. And uh, you can see the outside of the seed itself um, being dispensed with. And there's another one right there. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it may not show up. Um, anyways, she put a, a, a row of spinach beside the beans so that when the beans are growing, they're going to be shading the spinach and uh, keeping it a little bit cooler than the rest of it because the majority of the sun, so there's the east, so it comes up, the sun comes up in the east and it sets in the west over there by the barn uh, a little actually further than the barn uh, at this point in time um, yeah we haven't done an awful lot more with these particular uh, beds uh, so we're just waiting for them to germinate and uh, spread out of the ground and get moving um, so here uh, I showed you the dill and um, the rhubarb that I put in before but now we have a number of flowers that I've, that uh, Patricia and I planted here in this row. Uh, the carrots are sown at this point in time. Um, the cabbages are in and uh, the onions are in uh, along with the garlic. Uh, 
it into the last hole. Um, so now we're giving them a good drink, drink uh, so to make sure that they're going to be as vital as they can be. Just checking the sprinkler itself. Looks like it's a little bit uneven. Maybe I'll do a double check before I go in, just to make sure that it's not going to fall over or something along those lines. Um, as you can see, it's having a bit of a hard time against the wind. That's why I'm only doing about a third at this point. And then I'll pull it back a little bit later uh, in a couple of hours um, and uh, get the rest of the, uh, uh, the garden watered as well. So I gave them an initial drink. As you can see, there's a little bit of uh, darkness where I put uh, some water down and I did that with the couch as well. Um, just to make sure that they're not going to wilt and die in the time before we can get the uh, sprinkler onto them. Um, anyways, so that's the end of uh, planting season for uh, 2023. While there will be some additional planting over at the house, we'll be doing some uh, raised gardens. Uh, don't know when we'll get into that, but at some point we'll be putting some raised beds in and some things that we'd like to eat uh, fairly close to hand, so we'll be doing that at the, uh, the back of the house. Uh, you'll also see Rachel putting her tiny house uh, in, uh, probably later in July, early August, something along those lines. And uh, we'll keep you up to date as to what's going on, not only in the garden, but also with um, continued improvements around the property itself. We need to get into the woods there and start cleaning things up because there's uh, a lot of fallen trees, etc., and there's a lot of mosquito territory in there that uh, I'd like to get rid of. Uh, we're going to get rid of this little kitchenette uh, area. That'll go away, and we'll probably put some kind of covering area so that we can actually sit out here and uh, not have to sit in the direct sun um, while we're doing work in the garden or the area around. Anyhow, um, that brings us to the end of today, and uh, I'd like to wish you well and talk to you soon.